Let's go. The Eagles game is right around the corner and the squad's all systems go. Although that won't be without a couple key changes, as the run the ball please might be answered this week versus the Browns. However, despite the Stains' struggles, this is the NFL. Meaning it won't be a cakewalk, but there's several reasons to believe the birds can get back on track. Plus, the Eagles made a surprising roster move ahead of the game as well. So let's break it down. But first, let's run it. What's up, guys? Okay, so I think Underdog has lost their mind. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate them being the official sponsor of the channel, but they currently have odds that have a Bryce Huff sack is more likely to happen than an A.J. Brown touchdown. That doesn't make sense. No, it really doesn't. But be that as it may, make sure to take advantage of it, especially with it being Boostober, where Underdog is giving out free promos every single day of the month, so it's pretty hard to lose. Plus, right now, first-time customers can get a free Joe Burrow pick for this weekend, meaning all you gotta do is hit one other pick and you'll win big. So make sure to scan the QR code and then use my code Philly Special with a link down in the description where you can get up to $1,000 bonus cash on your first-time deposit. And okay, I promise this, but yes, for those wondering, I'm actually gonna go with a Deshaun Watson because, you know, he's practically asking to give the ball away, so let's take an over 0.5 interceptions, and then for Philly, give me Saquon Barkley to hit on an anytime touchdown. Of course, as always, please make sure to gamble responsibly and go ahead and let me know what picks you're going with down in the comments. Comments. I don't know, maybe the Bryce Huff sack isn't so crazy after all, since it sounds like the birds do have some tricks up their sleeves. As Nick Sirianni shared that the team has made quite a few changes that should show themselves on the field versus the Browns. However, not gonna lie, but I was expecting to see one of those changes to finally be getting to see Sidney Brown. But unfortunately, for those supporters out there, you're gonna have to wait another week. As the Eagles officially announced they've signed Paris Campbell to the active roster and will be elevating Jack Driscoll this week against the Browns. By the way, I suppose there was something to John McMullen's tweet about Driscoll getting some backup reps at center earlier in the week, especially given this news. But getting back to the Campbell signing, it does make some sense, considering that he was out of roster elevation, so the Eagles had to sign him if they wanted to play him. Plus, when you consider the fact that Paris Campbell has one more catch and one more touchdown than Jahan Dotson, despite how he's big-time trade for the former commander's wideout, it's... Well, at least notable. Also, obviously, this means Anaya Smith will at least have to wait another week as well. Yet again, the most shocking part to me is that Sidney Brown's practice window was opened up and all sides appeared to see him seeing action this week. We've absolutely dominated this process, myself and the team in there. And um, yeah, I don't think they put me in this position to return if I wasn't ready. So I'm, I'm mentally there. I'm, I'm physically there. And I'm just, I'm just ready to get back on the field. It's been a long time since you played the game. I mean, early January. Right. You know, I imagine you're pretty chomping at the bit together. Are you kidding me yeah hell yeah i mean like this is this is this is what i do this is what i get paid to do so um and this is what i love to do so i'm just i'm just excited to get back out there on one hand i can talk myself into the fact that you know what give the dude a little bit more time don't ramp it up don't rush it but i gotta believe it's just a combination of the staff trusting the guys on defense they have and understanding that if you were forced to play a couple backup receivers they're just more confident in campbell right now so like i said unfortunately we won't get to see that change yet However, the biggest change that we all want to see and we continue to say is run the ball. Because honestly, if you or I or even just any casual observer can see it, then hopefully this coaching staff with the bye week and the extra time to prep and self-scout and everything else can finally get that corrected. Like, it's pretty obvious. Saquon's no doubt been the Eagles' best player, as the dude ranks third in rushing in the NFL despite only playing four games while carrying a six yards per carry average. Also, another point to bring up, remember, Kellen Moore admitted he's going to make a more concerted effort to keep 26 involved. So, considering the fact that Cleveland just came off a game where they allowed 215 yards rushing and three touchdowns, with defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz's unit allowing five yards per carry on the season and ranking second to last in terms of rushing touchdowns allowed, there should be several opportunities. By the way, those opportunities could and probably will end up as chunk plays as well, since the Commanders ripped off gains of 28, 34, and 50 last week. Of course, one of those runs was courtesy of Jaden Daniels' legs. And even though no one would say Jalen Hurts has that kind of speed, he should be running more in this one. After all, Cleveland defensive coordinator Jim Swartz plays man coverage at league-high 45% of the time, which, adding on to that, makes sense why the Browns are giving up over 13 yards per quarterback scramble. I mean, it's blatantly obvious in this one. If Jalen doesn't see what he likes, he should run. He should just tuck the ball and run. I just felt like running. At the same time, I do understand and hear you. Yes, we do not want to turn the ball over. That's where it starts. And yeah, we've been saying that nearly every week. Plus, with all of his weapons back, Hurt just needs to not try to do too much and take what the defense gives him. Granted, with the Browns running a ton of single high shell coverage this year, the idea of A.J. Brown on a deep connection definitely seems likely. At the same time, Jalen's probably going to get some pressure. Since the Browns are third in pressure rate this season, which on the negative side just so happens to be where Jalen's the worst at. Just FYI, but against the pressure this year, QB1 is ahead of only Caleb Williams with a 3.6 yards per pass. However, I'm not panicking because I still believe in this offense. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. 
Oh yeah. Also, um, Miles Garrett is not Miles Garrett right now, so that can maybe put your mind at ease. Since the All Pro isn't fully healthy and had his own Agent Zero game last week versus the Commanders. Case in point, he registered zero tackles and zero pressures. Now, sure, the counter argument to that is that maybe it gives him more extra motivation to show up this week. But Zadarius Smith also just popped up on the injury report as well with an ankle. And although he'll play, he won't be 100% either. Which is why I agree with Anthony DeBona that this could be the best opportunity for Philly to get right. The Browns are like the perfect get right game because. It's in one of the teams that's like spiraling more out of control than the Eagles are because they don't really, they're not even really dealing with a bunch of injuries. It's just like, I mean, granted, their offensive line has been banged up, but they do have Deshaun Watson's healthy and Jerry Judy's healthy and Mari Cooper's healthy. David Njoku's coming back. So, like, they have weapons. They just, their defense is talented. But like you said, Deshaun Watson's not really playing well. But at the same time, if you look side by side, him and Jalen Hurts' numbers are kind of comparable because he has six total touchdowns and six turnovers. Jalen Hurts, I think, has six total touchdowns and seven turnovers. So it's not like either one of these quarterbacks has been Mm -hmm. playing out of their minds. It's just a matter of who's healthier. I think, obviously, the Eagles have a much better offensive line. Deshaun Watson's been sacked 26 times this season in five games, which is just insane. But I feel like we kind of said that going into other games this year where it was like, oh, this is the get-right game for the defensive line. Like They have to get sacks this week, and then the next thing you know, they get like two sacks or one sack. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield is just like dotting them up all over the field. So it's, it's a little bit worrisome that like the Eagles are so heavily favored and that everybody's expecting them to like blow the Browns out because I think the Browns, especially their defense, is a little bit better than they're getting credit for. I think their pass defense is pretty solid. Their, their run defense is where you can kind of take advantage of them. They're, they've allowed, I think, the eighth most rushing yards per game this season, but they are allowing a lot of points as well. So, I mean, I don't know if that has to do with the turnovers. They're allowing the third most points in the game at 24.2 points per game. So, Maybe that's where you, the Eagles can finally put up some points in the first quarter, have a comfortable lead. And But, I mean, the key is going to be Jalen Hurts not turning the ball over. It's going to come down to between Jalen Hurts and Deshaun Watson, who turns the ball over less. And, I mean, it's hard to feel encouraged about either one of those guys <laughs> not turning the ball over right now. So we'll see what happens. I know. It's sad that we're saying just don't turn the ball over for a $255 million quarterback, but that's where we're at. Yet at least we're not Cleveland. And like Anthony said, the hope is the Eagles offense can finally score points in the first quarter as they still hold the dubious honor as being the only team to fail to do so this season. That being said, Sirianni does not need to overthink this. Take the points and then rely on Deshaun Watson to be the gift that keeps on giving. Although, before we get to that point, it starts with stopping the Cleveland ground game. Now, fortunately, Nick Chubb is at least someone we don't have to worry about since he's not ready for action yet and ruled out for the game. Regardless, though, the Browns O versus the Eagles D isn't exactly featuring the best quality, as we've got a case like Shane Half called it a stoppable force meeting a movable object. Somebody has to win. Yeah, neither side has been very good. Although Jerome Ford is averaging 5.2 yards per carry and has been one of the lone bright spots on the ground nearly every week, which is why it'll be vitally important to keep an eye on Cooper DeGene's role in Fangio's defense to help against the run, especially because Cleveland offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey seems to use a lot of 11 personnel and even 10 personnel, meaning it's pretty likely Fangio ends up rolling out multiple DBs, but again, this is where it starts as we've seen multiple teams now be successful with this strategy. Stop Cleveland's ground attack and make them one-dimensional. Which then, the decision of what to do next becomes quite clear for the D.C. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! Fine, maybe that's a bit overkill, but it wouldn't be a stretch to think that we're going to see more blitzing from Fangio in this game. Because like I referenced earlier, Deshaun Watson is just asking to be sacked as the 29-year-old hasn't had any answers for the Blitz, which is sure why they keep coming, with teams opting in on that strategy to the tune of 24% of the time. Now, the problem for Kevin Stavansky is that all that's done has led to one of the worst third-down conversion rates and yards per play, resulting in a team that has failed to score more than 18 points in a game this season. I mean, say what we will about the Eagles having all those types of issues, but they pale in comparison to what's going on in Cleveland. Seriously, Deshaun Watson has essentially forgotten how to play quarterback, and the Browns are locked in at $230 million a year. Obviously, you could say the whole dog backed in the corner analogy, but this team just doesn't have enough to keep up with the birds if Philly takes care of business. And then, to make matters worse for the Stains, they've got an injury list that resembles a CVS receipt, with Cleveland ruling four players questionable, starting cornerback Denzel Ward, starting linebacker Jordan Hicks, rotational defensive tackle Maurice Hurst, and backup linebacker Mohamed Diabate. Although on the flip side, the good news for them is that starting left tackle Jedrick Wills, starting right tackle Jack Conklin, and fill-in starting right guard Zach Zenter were not listed with an injury status despite missing time in practice this week. So we'll obviously see how that plays a factor, but they're nowhere close to the Eagles report, with literally the Eagles having every single player on the active roster being healthy. I mean, I don't know when the last time was that that happened, but that's incredibly good news. Honestly, the big thing that it comes down to me is just show up hungry with some fire and passion. Oh yeah, and you know, maybe not be buddy-buddy with the opposing team. You gonna be gaming? Hey, yo. Hey, you gotta get on there one more time. I still play, bro. I got you on Fortnite. Yeah. I cannot block number three, bro. I'm sorry. 
I cannot block number three, bro. Please don't. Please. Cause he gonna hit. He gonna... Bro, you're 12, man. Congratulations, bro, and everything. Yeah, man. You be in the rocket now. I'm one year, I'm one year behind you. Okay. We've been playing against each other since college, bro. Oh, That's crazy. So long. I'm like, bro. You the same, too. <laughs> you easy. Been on you, all day, bro. you easy. Huh? You easy as fuck. I'm been on, on, on you all day, huh? How many catches you got? You got one catch, you got to win. All right. You know who I am, right? You know who I am, right? No, I do not. No, no. I don't. Yeah, I mean, you got more juice. It's amazing the difference between all those situations, but again, I'm fine after the game being chill. But when you step inside those white lines, it's got to be war. Anyway, also just a reminder that Thomas and I will be streaming live during the Cleveland game with play-by-play -play reactions and watch parties, so feel free to swing by and hang out. All right, let's hear those score predictions. Also, I asked this on the live stream, but what is the one thing that you would predict happens? Like the one thing that you're incredibly confident in happening? Hopefully, you know, it's an optimistic thing, but I don't know, a Saquon touchdown, AJ touchdown, or heck, even a Bryce Huff sack for once. Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna go with Eagles 31-20. Until next time, we'll see you on the live stream. This has been the Philly Special.